Now, solving linear systems is not so easy, but hey, I've got an idea. Watch this. Let's invent matrix division. Oh, yeah, this is going to be a great way to solve a linear system. Watch this. Let's say you've got ax equals b and you want to solve for x. Well, it's simple. All we do is divide both sides by a. So you do that, and then on the left-hand side, the a's cancel. That gives you x, and boom, that's it. That's your answer. x is equal to b over a. Are we done? No, we're not done. That, that, that's totally fake. You can't do that. You, you just can't divide by a matrix. What does that even mean? Well, let's think about that for a minute. I think it's time for a definition, something that undoes how a matrix acts on a vector. This is called the inverse of a matrix. And even though you can't divide by a matrix, you can multiply by something like a reciprocal, something like that matrix to the, to the negative one power. This is the inverse of A. It's denoted A superscript negative one, A inverse, and it satisfies the conditions that A times A inverse is the identity, and also A inverse times A, since matrix multiplication is not necessarily commutative. Okay, that's it. That's the, that's the definition. What, what do we do with it? What, what can we say about this matrix inverse? Well, um, let's get started with a basic lemma, something where we can uh, get somewhere. First of all, the inverse, if it exists, is unique. There's only one inverse to a matrix, if there are any at all. That seems kind of weird. How do you prove something like that? Well, let's assume that there were two inverses. Let's call them B and C so as not to confuse them. So B and C both satisfy the condition for the matrix inverse. What we're going to do is show that B and C are in fact the same matrix. And we're going to do that through the following reasoning. You take B, of course that's the identity matrix times B because the identity matrix is kind of like one. Uh, but the identity we're going to rewrite as C times A using the fact that C is an inverse to A. And now, because matrix multiplication is associative, you can rearrange parentheses. I'm going to write C times A times B as C times A times B. And then I'm going to use the fact that B is an inverse to A to say that A times B is the identity, C times the identity is C. You chain all of those together, and you get that B is equal to C. So that's it. There's only one inverse to a matrix if, if indeed it exists, we say that a matrix is invertible if and only if that inverse exists.